Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Keep your business moving forward and let LegalZoom help out with the legal stuff. For special savings, visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA in the referral box at checkout. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life, and that's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident that you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash Android. And by Blue Apron, the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Check out this week's menu and get $30 off your first delivery with free shipping by going to www.blueapron.com slash allaboutandroid. Hello and welcome to All About Android. This is episode number 342, recorded on Tuesday, November 7th, 2017, where your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. I'm Florence Ion. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Melts wow. a dramatic flow. Wow. It was almost intentional. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. 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 It's well, daylight. I... It's the end of daylight savings, as you can see. There's no daylight in my house whatsoever. It's dark Fall in back. your house. It's uh, dark and dreary. Yeah. No and snow though. It, it's not dark only... in your home, and you decided not to put any lights on. That's cool. I like yes. it. Yes. But yes. Ron, you've not... got lights on. I do have lights on because I'm lighting up the joint because it's election day, and hopefully everyone voted by now. Because here in New York, it's uh, about a half an hour till the polls close. So you still have time in California. Everyone watching live. I didn't have oh. any, we didn't have a very bustling local election. We didn't have anything going on this year. Hmm. Well, you, some, will, some, you will next there year. <laughs> there, yeah, yeah, there was some interesting stuff. In New York, New York State had a uh, referendum uh, asking the people whether we want to hold a constitutional convention uh, and open up the New York, it's, it's a once in every 20 years vote. So that oh, was wow. very interesting. Oh, yeah, interesting. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lots of. Lots of uh, opinions, both sides. So, yeah, well, very that's, interesting. that's this day every year. Lots of opinions yep. on both sides. Yep. Uh, no yeah. exception. Um, joining us in the darkness is Martin Edgar. <laughs> you may remember Martin from such episodes. I think it was like a year ago. You were on with uh, Mateo oh. and Yolanda, and we had a huge group at the table, and we just had a great time. It's great to have you back, Martin. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, it was Almost exactly a year ago. Um, and I, I will say I'm very, very happy to be on now, but it was much more fun to be there with everybody live. <laughs> sitting, know, sitting at the table. Is a, the table. Yeah, exactly. Sitting it at the is. table is a different experience entirely. Uh, today's a little bit different. It's just me at the table and I'm surrounded by television sets. Wait, 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 wait. What? You're not just surrounded by televisions. What is that in front of you? Oh, this? Oh, oh, you mean this? Ooh. Ooh. This, my uh, new Pixel book. A little, you it's got a little so G pretty. action in front of you. Jason, Dude. it looks so nice in front of you. Like, Thank it looks you. like you two were meant to be in this world. We were. We are. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes I'm looking at it and I'm using it like a laptop and I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of this. And then I go like this and then I <laughs> use it as a tablet. <laughs> you know? Okay, but do you sometimes like make a little tent for like, for for tent viewing, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, here I'll fa I'll face it to you. Yeah, like that. You mean? Yeah, I do. Yes. Like that. I do that all the time. No, I don't. This is probably the the one thing I don't do very often. Uh, you don't maybe do PowerPoint elevator pitches. Yeah. <laughs> no, not yet. I'm I'm gonna work on that now that I have this laptop. This is what will enable that. Um, this and maybe even Martin's app in the arena. That's just a little teaser. Oh, nice. Teaser for you. Um, Martin, it's really great to get you back here. Spiralcode.wordpress.com is the site that you're at. When you were on last time, you so you were the lead Android engineer at NetApp and... Uh, at AppStudio.nl, apps, I so, sorry. have to say, yeah. <laughs> Why did I get that wrong? Like, I got that wrong yesterday and I got it wrong today. I apologize. Um, it's a very difficult name. <laughs> I suppose so. You uh, think I could just like, you know, in this industry, 
you with think- the um, the app stores and yeah, yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> okay, well, you were doing awesome then. You're on the job market now. Just wanted to get make sure that we got that out there. Uh, True, it's important, valuable um, information that everybody needs to know for obvious reasons. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, I've been happily uh, unemployed since September. I've uh, finally been been taking some time off and uh, been enjoying life. Right on. That's the way to do it. You've also been creating cufflinks, which I'm impressed by. Uh, you oh, created some Android cufflinks, I, uh, oh, thanks to Shapeways. Oh, to show these off. Let's let's see. Oh, if those they, are so nice. Let's see if we can get it on the camera. Here it is. Dang! Wow, that's classy. I like that. So bring a little so class to the joint. I like it. Yeah, this is the silver variant. Um, it took me about five tries uh, to get it absolutely designed correctly and i printed them out in plastic and uh, showed them off to uh, a couple of uh, high up google guys uh, at the google development conference in krakow and they went absolutely nuts about it so that is awesome um, yeah and so I, and then you've got it up on shapeways right now right so anyone can can yeah. get themselves some of these cufflinks you can get them in in cheaper metals you can get them in platinum in gold um Whatever you want, that's the way uh, to just go. to show that you know you're a you're an Android uh, person. Yeah. See, I, and uh, by the way, a couple of weeks ago, when when Ron was out and it was just Flo and I, we weren't sure whether we could we could say this on the show, but uh, Ron <laughs> mm -hmm. was out because oh, he just got married. <laughs> I did. I did. Wow. I did. I did. I, I could have used some Android shaped oh, cufflinks. Right. So. Exactly. That was yeah, that was yeah, where I was, was going say. with that. You yeah, needed I some see, of that. Yeah. I picked oh, it up and ran with it, Jason. Right. Yeah, I know, but I I was out October twenty second, actually Sunday. It was lovely, lovely day in in New York City, and and then I was out the week after on the honeymoon. And yeah, no, I was just you know like it's it, it, it was a it was a small intimate affair, so I don't want to share it with all of social media. But yes, very excited to be married now. So wow. congratulations, that's awesome. Thank you. So we're super Congrats, happy guys. For you. Appreciate it. Uh, but well, I have to ask, what cufflinks did you wear instead of Android cufflinks? <laughs> You know what's horrible is that I didn't wear any and I didn't wear any cufflinks at all because I didn't have a shirt that had cufflinks, but I did have a shirt that was custom made. Uh, my father, my friend's father, has a shop down in Soho where he makes shirts like from scratch, like custom fit. So I got measured, made this custom shirt, and I had to make an extra long collar to look like the collars that they wear and that they wore in Goodfellas. Uh huh. Uh, so if I, if I can find a picture, I'll see if I can dig it up. But, uh, yeah, there was there, uh, my collar was ridiculously shaped. So there you go. I thought it was a fantastic collar. <laughs> I, I'm not used to seeing you with a collar, but I think that's the only collar for you. Yeah. As far as I it's a great, it's a great you shirt. Great, let me tell you. Yeah. The both of you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, so let's see here. This week, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to be discussing GMS Express. We're going to be talking about the new Razer phone uh, that was announced last week. Also, the HTC U11 Plus. Uh, Ron's going to tell us a little bit about his experience with the Google Home Mini. And uh, we've also got a deep dive. Thanks to Martin's uh, appearance here. We've got a deep dive on Android things. We're going to take a little bit of a look at the Android Things kit and what you can do with it and what he's done with it and a whole lot more. Before we get into the news, though, it's that time that most of you love and some of you like to write in that you don't love it, but that's okay. I we're love this and I wish it. I were there to oh, partake you, in this with you. You wish you were there. This is a safe one. This one, <laughs> I, I should have held it for when you were here because it's a good flavor and I know it already, but <laughs> it, it's it's the obvious. It's, Ooh, it's the gosh, Mint Oreos yeah. and uh, I, I don't think there's any way to get it open. You. You're not the only one who wishes uh, they were there, Flo. <laughs> uh, that lift tab isn't working this time. Oh, now it pops up. All right. I'm, I'm not surprised at all if these are completely gone by the time the show is over. But I'm going to take my claim on one of them because I always, I always loved these. Because th this is one hey, of those. Hey, now, if you could stamp this, this would look like the official Android Oreo Oreos mm -hmm. that were passed out to Google employees on Oreo launch day. What the heck is that? Is that a grabber? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, short um, circuit. I actually... Yeah. That's Johnny Five right there. Also known as Burke. 
<laughs> oh, that's so good. I I, have nine and a half out of ten. Um, wow. What's, what's that, Martin? <laughs> wow. No. Uh, I've got a friend in um, the Netherlands, and um, at one of these conferences, he printed out a whole load of these um, Android uh, Oreo uh, biscuits, um, oh. which were plastic, of course, so they oh. might not taste as nice. Yeah. Um, but he was uh, handing them out uh, to everybody <laughs> left and right. And did you get one? So, yes, I did. And I lost it at the after party. Oh. I'm afraid. I think that's a sign of a good after party, though, to be honest. It was. Okay, um, well, there you go. I was, <laughs> I was surprised to see, um, do you know these, um, God, in, in Dutch they call them a bollabot. You know, you have them at these, as probably at Chuck E. Cheese kind of things, you know, a, a big thing filled with plastic balls. Uh, yes. A bollabot? No. I don't know what that it's is. It's like it's like a it's like a crane machine oh. with like no, prizes no, inside. It's where, where the, the, the kids dive in. And oh oh yes, yeah, with the those. Yes, okay. Yeah. I'm very familiar the with those. The grocery stores. Yes. Okay. The grocery stores. Yeah. No, have- it's it's like these balls are like uh, about I don't know that big or so. You uh-huh. know, um, and it's filled with them, and you can swim in it. And it's a ball uh, pit. We call ball it a ball pit. pit. A ball pit. It. It's just a ball pit. A pit of balls that kids like to yeah. jump into. Yes. There, there go. we go. Oh, exactly. oh, those are the worst. I, I will it's tell just, you. It's just known as I a ball pit. Never, I have never uh, seen uh, a group of developers have so much fun in a ball pit uh, as at this Google developer <laughs> conference. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty. Sh- I'm pretty sure the Google campus is littered with ball pits. I think that's a thing that they have there. You can find slides and ball pits. And they do have sand pits strange. where they play volleyball. I have seen it with my two eyes. Yeah, they've got all sorts of pits at Google. That's the thing. <laughs> well, they've got the um, the uh, Android. Uh, um, yeah, what do you call those things? Um, these guys. The um, the playground filled with these guys. Oh, the little figurines. Yeah, Very large. Yeah, larger versions of it. Absolutely. Oh, the the uh, package of mint Oreos are coming back with lots of thumbs ups, uh, and apparently I get one. <laughs> oh, right. good. I'm well, at least I get two. One. Yeah, I'll save that for you for next week, Flo. All right, uh, Victor. I hope you're ready because I think it's time for a little news action. Here's the home of news that matters, such as. Where the cheese goes on Android news. <laughs> that is the news that matters. But it doesn't matter enough to be the top news. So you're going to have to wait for that one. Flo, you got the first one. Go. Well, it's good news for those of us with Pixel 2 devices because Google's November security update actually has small tweaks for those phones that everybody apparently, well, not everybody, but there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of activity in this area around headlines concerning things going on with this phone. Uh, But anyway, that November security update includes a change to the color profiles in the display settings to include a saturated mode on the Pixel 2. Um, There's also a small reduction of the max screen brightness and setting, uh, which also appeared in the 8.1 dev preview. Uh, Also, the security update promises more enhancement to to the display with uh, the December security patch update. So uh, let me start that over again and say that there are promises of more enhancements coming (laughs) in next month's security patch update. Um, There's also a fix for the clicking earpiece issue that apparently was plaguing the Pixel 2. I actually just read about this today. I completely missed that in last week's news sweep, whoops, Uh, as well as a crack Wi-Fi vulnerability fix and a number of Bluetooth tweaks since there, again, in that maelstrom of crazy headlines of things going wrong. Apparently, there are also Bluetooth issues with the Pixel 2. So it's just been a fun time all around for Pixel 2 buyers. <laughs> Not knowing what they're getting. And actually, Scooter X just put in the chat room, and I put it in that same block, Victor. I just added it now, a link to a 9 to 5 Google article where some of the Google Pixel 2 XL devices have an oleophobic coating that's wearing off, so it leaves these huge display smudges. I haven't really heard oh, of this other than right now, but Ooh. apparently this is a thing that's happening. I don't Do even know to what extent. Do people have, like, 
chemicals on their fingers? Like, what is causing this to erode so quickly? I'm thinking this is happening underneath the display. So I, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm hoping that that's not rubbing off on anybody's fingers, but um, maybe Ugh, not. It's ugly. Yeah, it's, that's no good. Um, I don't know how many people are, are complaining about this. Overall, it just can kind of continues being this thing that that's kind of a sour sour note to the the Pixel 2. I've been using the Pixel sure. 2 XL for the past week, and I have definitely gotten very. I mean, I've gotten over the whole blue tint thing. I don't even notice it anymore. It was I noticed it in the beginning, but then I apparently just got used to it, and I haven't seen any of the most of the other issues. Martin, I feel like I cut cut you off. What were you going to say? Oh no! I'm. I was just going to comment on, um, you know, them uh, having huge production issues, and I just wonder how widespread they are, because I remember with the a, w a while back with the HTC uh, M7 and 8, uh, there were people complaining about um, the camera and the um, they had a. a uh, an, a, a yellow sheen or something on the display, um, but that was wide. That wasn't very widespread. It was just a uh, a few people who did have that problem, and I wonder how widespread the problem is for the uh, for the Pixel Two. I think, it, it, from my estimation, it really depends on the issue that you're looking at, and that's kind of part of the part of my main grudge with this device is that there's a number of there's a number of, depending on how you look at it, there's a number of little things that add up to just kind of one big headache or there's, you know, deal breakers. Like if you have burn in on your, on your display, I, I will yeah. attest, I don't, I don't find it on mine, but you have to really go to great lengths to even remove that navigation bar to see it in the first place. So then I'm like, okay, well then even if it was there, I probably would never like, when would I ever really remove that? Maybe when I'm watching something, but I haven't noticed it. So it's not a big deal for me. Blue tint might be an issue for some people, but that's going to be the way that it is on all of these displays on the 2XL. That blue tint is there. It's just part of the OLED uh, technology and the display uh, that they used on there. You're going to get it on slight off-axis viewing and you, that either bothers you or it doesn't. Um, there's also the, the complaints that we talked about with the, the black smearing and that I have seen on the older Pixel device and I definitely see it on this one. I only really see it late at night. So if I'm on the couch and my display has kind of automatically ramped down and tinted because there's not a lot of light in the room, if I'm on something that has a lot of black content on it with some white stuff in between, if I'm scrolling around, that white stuff basically goes away because the black just smears on it while you're scrolling. It comes back when you stop, but it's still once you see it, it, it bugs you. And that, that's my main qualm is like, I love the phone, but all these little things add up and they just, they take what would have been a great phone and put a big asterisk on it. And it's just a bummer for, for some people. Well, I'm enjoying my pixel too. No, I am too. I'm, I'm not I saying that I'm not, I but yeah. I just wrote a whole thing today about like how great it is and how it's just like, I'm just so happy with it. And I realized that just sounds like I'm just blowing smoke, but I'm extremely pleased with this phone. I am, I'm quite enamored by it. Yeah. I have to say. But I mean, J Jason, you have yes. the XL, right? Yeah. I have the two XL. Yeah. yeah. And that's the, the problem child. Really? Well, that that seems to be the one that's like getting that. the most complaints. Yeah, absolutely. And then Flo, you have the smaller one. You have the just the Pixel Two. I do, right? but I don't even like. I don't even care about the phone. It's the camera. The camera has just made. I'm I'm just so happy about the camera. I don't care like what the phone looks like. I don't care that it's not <laughs> as like shiny and new as some of the other like phones that have come out this year. It's just kind of a plain phone, but. It's designed in Google style. It fits beautifully with the like stock Android interface. Just everything, the whole package is just nice and cohesive. Honestly, the way that it feels when you pick up an iPhone, like an iPhone just feels like a little package. Mm -hmm. And I didn't always have that feeling with Android devices, at least third party ones. But the Pixel, like I really get that feeling from it. And I think part of the reason I'm just so enamored by the second gen Pixel 2 is is the camera performance. The minute I took it out of the box and those motion photos are so cool. Yeah, they are cool. I like, like them. Like, is that not just to be able to have that ability to tap into, and I know this is going to sound really like, you know, internal, but to be able to tap into the memory that's associated with that photo and to be able to just like long press and kind of have that, 
memory kickstarted. Like, I don't know. It's just, I understand now like what the whole marketing shtick is behind the pixel. I don't know if that's necessarily resonating, but I also think it's kind of a bummer that like we've had, we've had this domino falling for the pixel two XL because I feel like it's soiled a little bit of what those of us enthusiasts were really looking forward to. Yeah. I completely agree. Ron, so, how are you the, feeling? Because I know, Ron, you've got the, the last the last year's Pixel at this point, right? That's your daily driver. Are you yes. tempted at all based on what you've heard? Or you just don't care? Oh, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm immensely tempted. I'm tempted. But you know me. I'm tempted by everything, right? Like, <laughs> That's true. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, like I, I, you know, as much as I, I've been, I've been a, a staunch kind of a proponent of the smaller version of the phones, not the XL version of the phones. But I see that panda colored phone, and I want it. You know, like it, like I want the new, newest, latest, and greatest. But I'm a little, I'm glad I didn't jump on it because of all these kind of issues and problems that are coming out of it. Um, but I'm not upgrading anytime soon. I'm going to let all the dust kind of settle. That's kind yeah. of my position right now. So. And I'm sure the dust will settle at some point, you know, it, it, like I, even in the past week, you know, you've seen a lot of the people like journalists that have written things about the display issues when they first started happening, kind of checking back in now and going, you know, actually in the grand scheme of things, it's really hasn't affected my my enjoyment with the device. And I would completely agree. Stephen, Stephen Hall of 95 Google wrote an article that like word for word, as I read through it, I was like, yes, this is how I feel right now. It's impossible for me to overlook that there is something kind of not perfect about the display. Having said that, there's a lot of really good, great things about the de device and the pic the camera is definitely one of those strong suits. It's a fantastic camera. I'm loving it. I think one of Google's, a... oh, sorry, Sorry, it's the Skyping. <laughs> um, I think one of Google's strong suits, it's the software experience. And I think having that sort of can help make you forget about the other things that come with. But I think yeah. it is important for us to remember this as Android fans and those of us who've been like their watchdogs because as Google tries more and more to build itself up as a device manufacturer, like it can't, you know, it's, it's not it's 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 not good. It, it's not good. And, you know, because Google has been around for a long time, they don't have as much runway to catch up. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like expected that they kind of I mean, this, of course, is coming purely from my opinion, but it's kind of like expected that they have the ball bouncing the right way at this stage in the game. And so I'm you know, it. Yeah, it's gonna growing pains. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, but it is growing pains, which you know you'd expect them to have grown out uh, of exactly. by now. Exactly. Um, and to to hook up to 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 well, what each of you have said. Um, I mean, it's all about you know what's the sum of its parts, because as Jason says, well, there are small issues, but if the sum of its parts is still better, then it's yeah. still a decent phone, uh, despite, you know, um, its minor niggles, which shouldn't be there. Um, and uh, one thing uh, Flo said about the motion uh, picture thing, um, HTC used to have this thing called Zoe, which is, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, kind of the same thing. Yeah. But this, this is the integration uh, is much better on the, uh, the new Pixel phones. Uh, so it actually becomes something you use instead of you fiddle around with a couple of presses and then you go like, ah, I, I'll just take a picture anyway because it's much faster to, to get that memory. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and, and it's integrated into Google Photos, which is Google's you know premium or is their photo app. So there's a lot more support because of that, that sort of stuff. So... Yep. Um, we'll probably talk a lot more about this phone and actually probably even the, the Pixel, um, the Chromebook yeah. Pixel next week. Uh, we got more yeah. news, Ron. What's up? Oh, we do. Some interesting hardware news, uh, which is kind of more, you know, businessy hardware stuff. But so Google and MediaTek, the chip manufacturer, announced a partnership called GMS Express. And it's not a delivery service for GMSs. <laughs> um, it's actually Google's mobile services is what allows, uh, that's what allows an OEM to install Google's suite of apps like Google Play and Gmail and YouTube. 
uh, pretty easily. Uh, this compatibility program helps smartphone makers to build GMS conformant hardware using MediaTek's system on a chip or SOCs. Um, so GMS come GMS apps come pre-installed on the MediaTek SOCs and basically allows MediaTek partners to step up from AOSP on their builds to GMS, which gives a quicker turnaround to market as a result. And it saves OEMs from having to build the hardware themselves to be compliant with Google's GMS standards. And uh, this is actually really great for the Android One effort uh, to try to get more low price phones in the hands of people in developing areas. Uh, so yeah, so interesting that Google MediaTek kind of get in bed to get, make it easier to get those apps on the phones right out of the gate on the chip, which is I think really, really interesting. Yeah, I what do you guys wrong. think? <laughs> Do you know if that um, also uh, integrates with Project Treble, which is, a, you know, the faster update uh, system Google is working on? That's a good question. I don't, but I would have to imagine that it it's it would, but but I don't know how they, if it's coming if the software is on the chip. You think it should? <laughs> right. You would think you think that they have a way to to handle the updates. But if the stuff is bur is on the chip on the phone, wouldn't that make updating it somewhat difficult? Um, that's a good question. Well, Martin. well, uh, and I mean, if if it, uh, new hardware manufacturers are creating any hardware with uh, Oreo, that those devices, from what I understand, are automatically trebleized. So you know, because yeah. Google this time around, it, and I, I remember we talked about this a few months ago. This time around, chose to do the thing where if you are on Oreo, treble is included. It's kind of baked in there and included. The only way you didn't get that is if it's if it, you have a heart, a device outside of a select few that's upgraded from a previous version to Oreo, then it may not be trebleized. Probably is not trebleized. But so I mean that yeah, this would be I I don't know if that's why they're doing this, but you have to imagine that certainly ties in any of these devices that are being created with Oreo are gonna have those treble hooks um uh, kind of built in there by default. And uh yeah, good good for well, that. Yeah the, the new one should because uh, my Pixel C is running Oreo, uh, but I'm not really sure it can uh, it does the treble thing. Yeah. Well, but yeah, that's really a good question. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I know that they mentioned that the first generation Pixel devices will be trebleized, uh, but I don't know about the Pixel C. That may be one generation yeah. f too far behind. I, I'm I'm guessing that they didn't choose to do but that with the Pixel C. By the way, I like that verb, trebleized. Trebleized. <laughs> I think that's that's a good one. It works. So. It does. The trick. <laughs> uh, and then finally, the the news story that inspired the intro, uh, groundbreaking debate over where the cheese on the hamburger emoji on Android should be placed. Oh, should be placed on the bun or the burger. <laughs> Google puts the cheese on the bottom bun, not on the burger, and that is strange. In fact, Sundar Pichai had something to say about this. I don't know if we have Sundar on the line or if we can get him on the line. I realize oh? it's, it's last minute and Sundar's a as busy, a, busy guy. As part but, of Burgergate, you'd think that he'd want to chime in. He'd want a future I, friend of the show would want to talk to us about I it. I know that he hit me up on email and he said, I've got, I've got things to say about this. I've got words. <laughs> and, I've, got uh, words. <laughs> I've got things to words. <laughs> I've got words. I already put them out on Twitter, but I would like to say them on your show. We might not have Sundar, though. And this um, is some great vamping, though, that I'm sure Sundar would appreciate <laughs> as we continue to buy Victor more time. <laughs> it's it's not there. Sundar is not online. He's offline. But he right, well, what, what would he have said? What would have he yeah, said? Yeah, no, he, he sent it to me in a text message. He said, okay, good, I good. will drop everything else. We, we will drop everything else we are doing and address this on Monday if folks can agree on the correct way to do this, which is this being, where does the cheese go? Does it go oh. on the burger? Does it go on the bun? It goes on the burger, Jason. <laughs> I, yeah, it, it goes on the burger. I like to not make this decision for anyone else. I prefer it on the burger. At yeah. Martin, when you have I a think, cheeseburger, think, where does the cheese go? Um, well, to be really honest, I'm not a fan of cheeseburgers. I like my burgers without cheese. Okay. Um, and I think there's a, a more more important issue here, and that is there are too few cheese emojis. There should be more. <laughs> I want I want my cheddar. I want my blue cheese. Oh. I want my brie. I want Gruyere. Oh, that's such a good I want point. My feta. Exactly. 
Oh, my girl comes I think that's that. something we should focus on. Yeah, we <laughs> need emoji for all different types of cheeseburgers. Is this is this all about I, emoji I, or all about Android guys? Come on. <laughs> Look, this this cuts <laughs> to the cheese. core of of Android users. In fact, if you worked at Google, you probably saw the cafeteria that they served Android burgers with cheese on the bun. Uh, that's and very a burger funny. on top of it. It's true, it happened. Very funny. All right. I will say I was impressed by the kitchens at Google uh, yeah. in Mountain View. That yeah. were, they, they, they go the extra mile. They go so far, in fact, that they put the cheese on the bun, even though they're not supposed to. Anyway, I mean, whoever, whoever had the idea to tell the ki to tell the cafeteria, which is one of the, the cafeterias at Google are fantastic. Whoever had that idea to take it down, like go down to the kitchen, have them put the have them put the uh, cheese on the <laughs> on the burger. Oh, I thought we were going to see the burger at. Google, not Leo and Megan. So are that's they taste <laughs> testing burgers with cheese on different? I think they are. I think I, they're. I they're, love the googly eyes. I think they're testing <laughs> whether you can tell the difference between the cheese on the burger or the bun. But anyways, I'm happy we didn't solve that uh, that yeah. conundrum. Flo, you got the email. Go. That's too bad. I wanted to eat hamburgers. I do too. So uh, we've got an email from uh, a person who refers to themselves as wise man white. Uh, in last week's episode, someone with poor vision was looking for a phone with great optical zoom. Y'all forgot about the Moto Z. A refurbished one on eBay is $220 and the camera Moto Mod is $190. That's $410 for a phone with 10 times the optical zoom. It may be a bit thick, but I believe it'll meet the person's requirements and thank you for reminding us of that one also keep up the great work <laughs> and then ronak gandhi also well actually we heard from a, a few other people that pointed out and i knew there was another phone that i had reviewed this year that had the optical zoom the one plus five uh, has the dual camera yeah, optical zoom. I thought zoom. about that after we finished the show last week, and I was like, crap, I totally forgot to mention the OnePlus 5 that it does that. Yeah. Uh, so sorry that I forgot to mention that because the OnePlus 5 is a great Android experience, and it's cheaper than a lot of other phones out there, and yeah. you get the ability of doing the actual optical zoom that a lot of phones still can't do. Yep, yep. So. So there's a few more options. Maybe not the least. I, I can't remember that email whether whether that person was looking for a lower cost phone. And if that's the case, we didn't really help you out because these are like 400. When you put that that Moto Mod attachment on there, you're talking around 400 bucks. Plus, it's not very good. It's just well, well, that's true. It's just not very yeah. good. Uh, you're not gonna get. I mean, just yeah. I one plus five. <laughs> okay, I, I can get behind that. And they'll take care of you with software updates, so. Yeah. All right, cool. So okay. hopefully that helps you. Cool. All right. Hopefully that helps you, and hopefully our next sponsor can help you. We want to thank LegalZoom for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. And uh, listen, as a business owner, you know how important it is to keep moving forward. You always got to be forever forward is what they say in business. I'm a businessman. I know that. <laughs> but a lot of times things come up to take your time and focus away from growing your business. When it comes to reviewing contracts, registering for trademarks, or staying current on fees and permits, LegalZoom.com can help you simplify your life. LegalZoom was created 16 years ago by the brightest minds in law and technology, and they've helped more than 2 million business owners easily and affordably navigate the legal system with confidence. The best part, you never have to worry about an attorney's billable hours piling up because LegalZoom is not a law firm. Instead, you get the advice you need to answer your business's questions at fixed rates through LegalZoom's nationwide network of independent attorneys. And let me tell you, I've been a small businessman for years. I've got my own companies, and thing, LegalZoom is such a great resource to help you navigate the stuff when you need contracts and things like that. Honestly, LegalZoom is something that I I use and can tell you it definitely helps you run your business that much more smoothly and legally, which is key in this day and age. <laughs> so take some pressure off yourself. Go to LegalZoom.com now to take care of your business before the year winds down. And for special savings, be sure to enter, enter promo code AAA in the referral box at checkout. That's AAA for special savings at LegalZoom.com. And as always, we thank LegalZoom for their support and keeping us legal. Thank you, LegalZoom. All right. Um, I had to eat one of those mint Oreo cookies. While I don't you blame did, you. Well, you did the Oh, wow. Read. Just the one. It's just the one. I don't want to go yeah. overboard. And you know how Oreos get stuck in your teeth. I don't want that. 
No, you help. don't. No, nobody wants that. You don't want that and either. And you promised one f- uh, to uh, leave one for Flo, so. Yeah, no, well, I That's forgot okay. about that. It's still down there, though. So we'll see if All it right. makes it to the, the end of the episode. Store. I'll buy them. <laughs> That's true. Mint Oreos, easy to find. All right, Victor, it's time for a little bit of hardware. I'm actually realizing the the Oreo package half of them are gone. That's <gasps> wow. how fa- that's how fast this this that's, thing got. Wow. It, should, it shouldn't it shouldn't actually be your guys taste test that is the 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 weather to prove it's a good flavor. It should be a half an hour after the show starts, how many are left after the, <laughs> the, twit, the twit vultures have gotten into it? Yeah, yeah I think that's you know good it's good when they've all been. We're just here to taken. describe it for the listeners so they know what the rest of the twit staff are getting into. <laughs> <laughs> Robot, this is a good point. He says half of them are still there. Hmm. Oh, uh, that's a good point. A video is an around the clock <laughs> operation, that's, people. That's true. We do what we can. All right, Ron, go. Yes. Yeah, so when the Google Home Mini was announced by Google at the big uh, announcement day, the presentation wasn't even over when I already went to the Google store and bought one. Uh, it arrived actually conveniently several days before my wedding. Um, so it was fun. So I got to install it and look at it. Um, so I've had it since October 19th or 20th or so. I've been playing with it. It is, as, as everyone who watches the show knows, I uh, watches on video knows I have a Google Home here in the living room. We put the Google Home Mini in the bedroom. Uh, we got the coral color. So I got the red one. Um, the fabric looks very, very nice. It is. It, it looks like a nice little red hockey puck. A um, couple of things about it straight out of the gate. It's a Google Home. It does the same thing as the Google Home in my living room. Uh, no big surprises there. Uh, what it does do is made me realize how good the speaker in the regular Google Home is because this speaker, mm. not so great. Not that it's bad, but it's it's definitely not. For, I tried listening to music on it and listening to the news, and you could tell it's a it's a smaller, cheaper, lesser kind of speaker. And not you know, and we know the main Google Home has multiple speakers and all that sort of stuff. It really lacks a presence. There's not much bass to it. Um, so if you're planning on buying the Google Home Mini for music, know that going into it that it really doesn't sound better than one of those cheaper Bluetooth speakers. Um, so you know your your mileage may vary there. Um, that said, using it has uh, two things kind of came out of it. Um, lowering the volume on the Google Home is where you just kind of you you rotate your hand your finger on the top of it and it changes the display. The volume control in the Google Home Mini is tapping the left and right. That's very annoying very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, just the subtle difference in the interface change is just like for a moment I got to say, oh, wait, which one am I using? Like I found myself trying to rotate the top of it and have the volume mm-hmm. go down. I'm like, oh, no, I need to tap the left. And so that's just a kind of nitpicky user interface thing. Um, but also what it further realized is it um, – and this is a little, little bit of a long-winded story, but – Geez, now maybe 2005 or 2006, I visited uh, the Microsoft campus up in Redmond, and I got to walk through their prototype smart home idea. And this was all built off of Bill Gates' vision for a connected home. And one of it, one of the ideas was that you wore a little thing, and as you walked through the house, if you were listening to music or watching TV, the media traveled with you from room to room. Mm-hmm. And now that I have two devices that do this. I find myself very much wishing that Google can figure that out because I'll be in the bedroom in the morning and I'll say, okay, okay, G, good, you know, good morning, give me the news. And it starts as I'm getting dressed and then I move into the living room to go make my tea and have my do my morning routine and I wish it would move to the main Google home, you know? Um, uh, otherwise, I got to stop. It should be stop. possible. If it Bro, is, I haven't figured that out. Yeah. No, um... It's it's not like a consumer option yet, uh, but uh, I was at this Google conference and they, they were pushing uh, Google Home and Health Program for it and that kind of thing. Um, and um, if you couple this with, uh, there's an appy called, I believe, uh, Google uh, Location or uh, Nearby. Sorry, that's it. Yep, Nearby. Um, the Home should be able to do that. So. A smart developer uh, should be able to have to uh, be able to figure that out if you, for example, wander around your home with your phone in your pocket or hand. Yep. That it's would be cool. I will say yet. that's when it, I it, wanted to. Sorry. <laughs> I will say that's one of the reasons I like the JBL Link 20 because it has the battery in it. And so as long as you're on the same Wi Fi network. So you just take it just, with you. 
<laughs> take it with you. Just you, take yeah. it with you around the house. And... Although, although another solution for this, Ron, is it, do you ever use the voice command in all rooms or on all speakers? No, I haven't, and that's a good point. I should I should try that tomorrow morning. I did read about that when I was looking into this, and I should try that. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I know it works with music. We do it all the time, and yeah. I feel like the number of of Google Homes in our home is is rapidly expanding. So when you do that, the house gets really loud really fast. But it yeah. works perfectly. I'm pretty sure it would work on on uh, Tell Me About My Day or whatever the the, uh, the just morning, morning briefing is. Yeah. Could, you just say good morning, and it goes through the weather, and then the, um, and then it goes through your your order of news, of news. outlets. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So try it on yeah. on all speakers or in all rooms, and see if that I'll, works. I will try it tomorrow. But you, you've plugged it just, into Chromecast Audio, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't have a I don't have a stereo with Chromecast Audio enabled yet, so like I don't have that aspect I, i've been using uh uh the google home as my main music listening device for a while now so uh, yeah because i, I, I it should be a sorry <laughs> ladies first no i'm sorry i was just gonna ask i think i was changing the subject and i didn't mean to it was i'm sorry this is what happens when everyone's on a tv um <laughs> I was just going to ask Ron if you'd tried doing a home group yet and having music just playing simultaneously everywhere in your house. No, I have not. Unfortunately, I have I, I have not done that because the apartment is so small that if it's playing on the Google Home, it's kind of fine. Like, really, we don't need the Google Home Mini, to be honest with you. Like, we're in a New York City apartment. It's fine. It's more because we can. And actually, the one thing that I have been using, which I wished I could use, was um, uh, is using Google Home Mini as an alarm clock where I just say, you know, okay, gee, you know, set an alarm for tomorrow at six six thirteen, and it does it, and that works great. So for forty nine dollars, it's a swell looking alarm clock. I've got <laughs> a little question about the fabric, uh, Ron. Um, yep. Does it attract dust at all, or is it not that uh, not that I have noticed, that but it's only, been a few, it's only been a few weeks, and and our cleaning person came today, so I couldn't check that. But I will check within the next two weeks to see if it, if it accumulates <laughs> dust. <laughs> uh, well, so just, anyway, but, just uh, thinking for the allergic types. Yeah. So all in all, though, for forty nine dollars, I I don't I mean it's good. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I have it. Um, if I had a bigger house, if I had a second floor or something like that, I could see it fitting in a little better. Um, but yeah, it's neat. It's it's just Google Home smaller. And cheaper, so yeah. it's so. like Google Home, but yeah. some more mini. That's probably why they called it Google Home Mini. Yep. Forty nine dollars so for that. Now let's talk about what everybody bugged me on Twitter about for a week. Yes. Oh yeah. And I hope we can get one of these on the show sometime soon. Gaming hardware company Razer. They're the company that bought Nextbit uh, earlier this year, unveiled their, I would say, eagerly awaited smartphone. We had been hearing that they were working on one, the Razer phone, not like the old flip phone Razors, not missing an E in Razer. Uh, but, that was Motorola. Yeah, that was Motorola, exactly. Uh, but this, so this is a basically... I, I guess it would be like a, the next version of the next bit Robin kind of sort of because they put the fingerprint oh, reader duh. on the side. Right. And it kind of yeah. has a little bit of that boxy design similar to what the next bit Robin was like. Snapdragon 835 processor, eight gigs of RAM because they're really targeting this uh, to gamers, Yummy. which makes a whole lot of sense. 64 gigs of storage, micro SD card slot, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. So a larger battery than we're used to on devices of this size. So uh, that can stand up, you know, stand up to higher power uh, gaming and last longer throughout the day, maybe into a second day. Dual 12 megapixel rear facing camera with optical zoom. So here's another option for optical zoom. It's not out yet, but there you go. 8 megapixel front facing camera and uh, Nougat 7.1.1 at launch. Oreo coming in Q1 of 2018. Here's another interesting fact about this <laughs> display, about, about the, the device is the display. It's 5.72 inch, 120 hertz display. So that's a faster refresh than I think we've seen in a smartphone to date. The iPad Pro has 120 hertz display, but I don't believe any phone does prior to this. So you're going to get, you know, better gaming animations, smoother animations throughout the UI, all that kind of stuff. They really targeted, like I said, this phone for to be a device for gamers. Uh, you're not going to get a headphone jack, though. 
Though they did say that it, the uh, <laughs> the DAC adapter that's included in the box is THX certified, and it's six hundred. Dang, dang, uh. six hundred ninety nine dollars at launch, but it's pre order right now. <laughs> so, so I've got thoughts. I've got all considering right. Considering I, considering I was on the next bit uh, uh, bandwagon, and I was a big fan of next bit Robin. Um, first off, no headphone jack. Haha. <laughs> Uh, second off, it's <laughs> funny to see it's funny to see that uh, Razer not only inherited Nextbit's great, you know, a built, you know, great design sense and and hardware stuff, but uh, they also inherited the slow OS updates. If they're saying Oreo coming in Q1 2018, which in Nextbit language that's at least Q2, right? <laughs> um, so so that'll be that'll be interesting to see. That said, I think it's really neat. I think it's a bummer that it's twice as much as the Robin was. Um, a part of one of the things I love about Nextbit was they're making great hardware that was affordable. Yeah. Um, admittedly, they made some compromises with that. Like the we know the camera wasn't great. You know, battery had quite was questionable. Things like that. Um, but they're lean. I mean, it makes sense because Razer is a gaming company. And you know, when I first saw this, it was Razer is the is the phone for gamers. And someone on Twitter said, "Are you gonna get it?" And I said, "I'm not a gamer." So yep. like, I'm not going to get it, you know, like I'm not planning on getting it. But then I saw the other interesting news, Jason, I don't know if you want to add on to this, the, 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 the ancillary news with this, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. A friend of the show, Kevin Barry, uh, is, is probably very, very happy. In fact, I know he's very, very happy because he posted on medium <laughs> about this. Nova launcher is pre-installed. So Nova launcher is the launcher du jour. On the new Razer phone, and, sure. and of I'll, the day, yeah, of, of of the year of the however long this phone exists, uh, it'll be curious to see as Razer, you know, if they produce more smartphones, if this is a permanent relationship, if uh, Nova Launcher is just yeah. the launcher for Razer phones, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, that's they right. are selling it at uh, the I Razer guess. store. So they cool. now it's notified I, me right now. It's pre-order. They haven't shipped it out yet, right? No, I but I read that they're going to be on display at the Razor store in the in the downtown SF mall. Oh, okay. So, which I just think is interesting because they have this giant store in the mall, <laughs> and it's going to be—I don't know—it's going to be on display. It's just. It's like such a different thing from Nextbit. It's not yeah. an online only retailer. Like you're going to be able to go to stores and buy this device because this company has that has those partnerships already yeah. for inventory. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, a, and a storefront for, for you to check them out. So that's uh, one step ahead. Martin, what do you think about this? I I like these kinds of phones. Um, I mean, the stuff you can do with them is just, uh, yeah, as a, as a, as someone who likes to do all kinds of uh, stuff on his devices, you know, this just is is a mega powerful computer in your hand. It's got a great screen. Uh, by the way, it's not the first 120 hertz phone there is. Um, oh, okay. Sharp had the, the Aqu Aquos XX3, mm -hmm. uh, which I just Googled again because um, I wanted it. Ah. I think this is, what, a year ago or something? Um, and people were, or well, some people were, were talking about it and they said it was amazing. Um, but I've I never been able phone. to even find, find where to get one, uh, here in Europe. Um, so I've, I've got my eye on this one. Um, it just looks, I, I like the look. It's kind of like, uh, the, um, yeah, the obelisk in 2001, you know, just the. <laughs> big square yeah. thing. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of the, the, the Touch HD, uh, uh, the HTC Touch HD when it still uh, ran Windows Phone. Um, oh, okay. You know, the kind of the squared off shape. Right, um, right. But I love the hardware. Uh, you can do some interesting stuff on there. Uh, the battery is great, which for me is really important. Um, you know, you might not even have to take your charger along. <laughs> I, I think it's I think it's interesting. This reminds me a lot of Amazon's failed attempt at doing phones, yeah. but more more similarly, Amazon's successful attempt with tablets is that they've created a device that is very specific to their customer base. Yes. Right. Like they, like there are guys who like I mean, there are there are men and women who are loyal gamers who buy Razer equipment and now they're like, yeah. oh, Razer also makes a phone. Cool. Sign me up. You know, it's I can do mobile gaming on it. Awesome. That's what I want. 
And I'm very curious what their the goal of Nextbit versus the goal of Razer is very different. Nextbit was really reaching out, trying to you know make beautifully designed hardware at a cheaper pr price, and like they had all this lofty mm -hmm. startupy kind of missions. And Razer just wants to make cool looking stuff for the gamers, you know. And so, you know, and I and I th find it really interesting that Razer seems to have cut out. The fluff that was the next bit. There are no multiple colors. There's no. I thought there would be like a glowy green version or something like that, yeah, but right, now right. like, no, just this one, red right, with yeah, black exactly. trim or something. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, as far as like the glowing lights on the side yes. or something. Yeah. Um, so like, and it, as far you know, as far as I can tell, the cloud storage stuff is gone. Right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they, they really picked next bit for parts and which is what happens in an acquisition and they made a device that fits for their eyes. That's fine. I mean, that's good. It's good. You know, like, uh, you know, it's good that this, that team is able to go do something, you know, interesting with what they built, but it's very specific. Although I would be interested to see if they made a version of this aimed at like video, like film or like for the film lover on the go. Like the like, Cause phone? it's such, yeah, like such yeah. a great screen, take advantage of that, you know? So. Right. Yeah, that's a well, that's, that's a very interesting point because yeah. um, I can see this also um, being picked up as a work phone, you know, um, a, a, an actual tool um, for certain industries where you know they might use laptops now or God knows what. Um, but the fact that it's got such a large battery, it's got a good screen, um, it might make it interesting uh, for people uh, for companies who need to deploy something on a powerful phone for God knows whatever mm -hmm. use, but maybe there are a lot of uses. Huh. Taking over the world. Good point. Yep. 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 Taking over the world. Like that scene <laughs> from the last Die Hard when the entire infrastructure of technological infrastructure of the United States is taken over by one hacker. The last Die Hard. I don't remember that one. No one, no one watched that movie. <laughs> it was a terrible one. With <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, Didn't yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that one at all. They only uh, made three. Let's, let's move on. Three. All right, Flo, you got the last one. We're we're moving on to to HTC, uh, the makers of the Pixel Two, and now also the makers of the U11 Plus smartphone, which was actually announced last week. This is a six inch super LCD six uh, phone. It's rather, it's a six inch phone with a super LCD six display. It's got uh, latest specs inside Snapdragon, 8, Snapdragon 835, uh, either four or six gigs of RAM and either 64 or 128 gigs of storage, a 3,920 milliamp battery, which is just stellar and I think one of the biggest ones uh, in a phone of this class. I think that's even bigger uh, than the Note 8 battery, if I recall correctly. Also IP68 uh, water resistance, Bluetooth 5.0, Android 8.0 Oreo right out of the box, which is great. Uh, Edge Sense for those of you who are into squeezing your phone, I still forget that I can do that with the Pixel 2. Uh, 12 megapixel rear facing camera with 1.7 aperture, optical image stabilization, eight megapixel front facing camera with 2.0 aperture, Unfortunately, right now this is limited. Uh, well, actually, Martin can probably jump for joy for this. It's limited to Europe and Asia only at present. 699 euros for the six gigs of RAM and 128 gigabyte version. And uh, I mean, do you guys remember the summer when we were mulling over all the Pixel rumors and we had heard that HTC was making a bigger variant of mm -hmm. the Pixel? Mm -hmm. The Pixel 2. Well, apparently, apparently sources uh, of The Verge say that the U11 Plus is the device that HTC had taken and essentially rebranded as like, you know, a a second fanfare to have for the year. I would say akin to the Galaxy Note 8 for Samsung. Hmm. And I say that only because this is also a six inch phone and, you know, big phones and same class and all that. But yes, so right. U11 plus for our Asian and European viewers who are interested in another HTC experience that maybe would have made it into a Pixel 2 XL if it weren't for whatever deal Google struck with LG. <laughs> maybe. Right. I don't know. Who knows what <laughs> happened? Who knows what happened? 
Who knows? We need sources to, to clear this does, up. Does it, does it have an IR blaster, though? Uh, I don't know. I didn't read anything about an I, IR blaster. Why? Well, um, because I want my phone to have one. Oh. Um, <laughs> that is very European I, of you, by the way. Only in Europe do I hear about <laughs> IR blasters and in Asia. Americans, oh. we don't even know that that's a thing you can have in your phone. It's true. Oh, I'll tell you why I want it. You can it's turn off the TV with your phone. Hotel, what? Well, that, but um, when you're in a hotel, very often they lock their TVs down and they give you a cheaper, small little remote. Um, and this way I can actually plug my laptop in and, you know, control uh, uh, the TV and make it output to a or uh, input uh, from HDMI and that kind of thing uh, using my phone. It's mm. um, very creative. <laughs> Sony phones often have IR blasters, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. They, the Sony phones uh, yep. include uh, those. But they're Huawei. also, a lot of times, Sony phones do really well in foreign markets. In, in the U.S., you know, kind of land with a with a thud. Uh, so there's probably some truth Well, that. that's what happens when you yep. don't have any carrier backing or marketing to well, back up your true. phones. That is very true. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Ron, go for it. We want to do an email, quick email. Dave from Los yeah. Angeles wrote it, wrote in and says, on your October 31st show, you read an email from a user who wanted to be able to charge their phone while using the USB-C headphone adapter in their car for music. I'd like to suggest another alternative, a Bluetooth to auxiliary jack adapter for your car. For anywhere from $10 to $30 on Amazon, you can find a Bluetooth adapter that, has, that simultaneously frees up your charging port and gives you the option to go completely wireless with your phone when you just don't want to deal with dongles and wires. We used Bluetooth adapters in both our previous cars, and while not as slick or convenient as an integrated solution, it was very easy and effective for us for several years. Good luck to your listener, however they choose to get their fully charged tunes. And this is a great solution and just further cements the fact that you don't need a, uh, a headphone jack. <laughs> I don't want aux cables. I've completely converted to the world of Bluetooth in cars. Every time I get a zip car or a rental car, I automatically look. I make sure that it's got Bluetooth so that I can just pair my phone and use it. And if you don't have Bluetooth in your car, these adapters are fantastic. So, but um, can I say something? Yes. Can I say that I have a Bluetooth adapter I've attached to an auxiliary cord in my glove compartment, um, but that I plugged in the auxiliary, uh, the cable into the actual jack or the dongle that came with the Pixel 2, and the sound is like way better. It's louder. Like yeah. I actually get yeah. decent bass in my car. Um, I've been really rocking out and I haven't really been rocking out in my car in a while because the music would be too dim and you know, you need it to be loud <laughs> yeah. to really work and have the effect. So. Amen, uh, sister. <laughs> just something to consider. Yeah. Cool. I mean, sometimes okay. the technology in Bluetooth, it, it compresses it down compared to a straight mm -hmm. audio feed and yeah, some people yeah. are okay with that. Some people are absolutely not. So. Depends uh, on what's important to you. Yeah, so. it's, it's part of the reason why I've been so resistant to Bluetooth because I don't want that. But <laughs> apparently, once the pickle pixel pickle buds, <laughs> they should be should have been called pickle buds. Uh, once the pixel buds come out, I'm gonna have to get it for here because I'm living the dongle life now, and it's already bit me in the ass one time. So gonna have to get some Bluetooth hey wireless man, headphones. I've I've been on the dongle life since since I got the Moto and the Pixel, and I, it has not bit me in the ass once. So. It took me one trip to the gym for me to realize I forgot that the dongle. And then right. that's the worst thing, too, because then you have to really ask yourself, okay, I'm here at the gym. I need to do this for an hour, and I can't listen to anything. What do I do? No, you can't do it. Can't do it. I gotta go home. So I got in the car, I went and got the dongle, came back. And but the thing is, yeah, the thing is, once you do that once, you never do it again. But anyway, all right, let's I, move on. I keep them connected to my headphones at this point. All right, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. If you are thinking about getting a mortgage, or even if you've been through the mortgage process, you know what it's like. You know that it's not always the easiest thing in the world. There's a lot of information. It's very analog in its approach, let's say. Uh, and of course, the folks at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, they realized that the mortgage experience wasn't keeping up with the times either. They knew that it was dated. It needed a client-focused technological revolution. And that is why they created, uh, Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. Rocket Mortgage gives you the confidence that you need when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. 
It's simple. It allows you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. It's convenient. They have trusted partners that allow you to share your financial information with Rocket Mortgage at the touch of a button, so you're not living that analog life anymore. It's powerful. Whether you're looking to buy your first home or your 10th, Rocket Mortgage is able to perform thousands of calculations in seconds. Based on your income, your assets, and your credit, Rocket Mortgage can analyze all of the home loan options for which you qualify and then find the one that is just right for you. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. To get started, all you have to do is go to rocketmortgage.com slash Android. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Android. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS, consumeraccess.org, number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support of All About Android. All right, so Android Things is a thing. And Martin, you have an Android Things thing. Oh, I do, I do. Let and, me grab it from the side. And I'm very um, curious. I'm very interested, as I think we all are, because I've heard about this Android Android thing thing. They were at actually, Google I.O. They, they, they had a little dome at Google I.O. of, like, demos you could try. That's and right. And I was like, oh, man, this that's is so neat. Right. So developers can kind of get in there and, and use what looks, I mean, what looks to me with my untrained eye to be like a little developer board that's reminiscent of a, you know, I have a couple of Raspberry Pis at home, so kind of looks uh, similar to that, but how is it different? Uh, what, how did you get yours, and, and what what does it do? Um, well, uh, they, I went to uh, Krakow for the Google Developer Conference there, and um, yeah, they were demoing uh, a lot of uh, different uh, use cases for uh, this little board, um, and they gave every developer there um, a development kit. So that's how I got mine. Um, and I was very uh, lucky to get it very quickly because uh, the line literally took uh, a couple of hours uh, to get your development board, uh, which thank God I missed. Um, <laughs> but this is what I got. Um, let me hold it up. Is it visible? Yeah, it's visible more or less. It's a box. We can't really read the writing, but that's yeah. okay. It's just a box. Um, so I, I got it and I played around with it. Um and this is basically what you get in the box. I've kind of clicked it all together and well, it's connected uh, to Android Studio at the moment. Let me just oh, try and hold it up. Let's see. Okay. Is that a screen? This is um, a little touch screen. Um, this, yeah, here we go. There we go. This is the dev board. Um, this is a little camera module connected to uh -huh. it. Um, and oh, the screen uh -oh. is now, did I reset something? Let me just reset it real quickly. This goes, ah, Easily there done. we go. There we cool. go. Um, so basically, this is like a dissected yeah. phone at this point, right? I mean, it's not the same thing, yeah. but uh, for all intents and purposes, it's a it's a logic board that you know that you can run Android on and connect your own components to and make your own things. That's why they call it Android Things. That's exactly what it is. Um, when I when I got it and I was looking at the specs, um, it is basically. Any uh, phone which is which is undressed and uh, has the covering taken off and has been dissected, as you say. Um, and, uh, well, of course, the difference is that it's got all these little, um, yeah, pins you can connect different stuff to. Uh, so you can add motors and you can add uh, blinky lights or irrigation systems. And, um, yeah, in effect... It is kind of an Arduino. It is kind of a Raspberry Pi. It's actually more of a Raspberry Pi than an Arduino because Arduino is something uh, which basically you run a program on and the program goes through its steps and then it goes back to the front and then it goes back to the steps. And um, Raspberry Pi and Android Things boards, they actually have real operating systems um, and the main difference between the Raspberry Pi and the Android Things uh, thing 
is really that Android Things runs Android. Um, mm. And that means that you can basically uh, do everything you want uh, you've been doing with Android, uh, plus you get the option to uh, get info from outside into your uh, little program uh, and also uh, get it out. So uh, activate sprinklers, all that kind of thing. And I've seen a lot of cool little demos, but I've also talked to serious developers who are using these kinds of boards um, for home farming. So they're developing this whole home farming, yeah, a farm in a box, call it, uh, and they get temperature readings and moisture readings and whatnot and use that uh, and analyze that in their normal Android program. Um, and, yeah, based on that, they sprinkle or they turn on the lights or whatever. And, and um, so the, to, to interrupt real quick, these are developers that also have a passion for home farming, right? Because like, like these are <laughs> developers at a company, which I'm not making fun of at all. But yeah. but I mean, just just to illustrate, like this isn't the kind of thing where you get this kit and you don't know anything about programming. You're like, I'm going to get this kit and put together this thing that helps me be a home, you know, f farming at home. It's, you it's, still need to have a developer mind and, and knowledge in and, order to yeah. develop for Android. But, uh, but also yeah. agriculture and farming and stuff like that is like th there's a huge amount of IoT growth in that yeah, space. Yeah, there really is. You know, yes. in, ter in oh, yeah. terms of like ir irrigation regulation and and temperature control and all that sort of stuff. So it makes sense, you know, that, that there's a lot more kind of DIY farming going on. So like the fact that, you know, this is another tool that they can use, like I I'm not surprised to hear that at all. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And yeah. If you're a developer, it's really simple because usually uh, with farming or God knows what, you need um, specialized hardware development knowledge uh, to program PLCs and PICs. This, if you're an Android programmer or an uh, iOS programmer who has transitioned to Android, if you've finally seen the light, um, it's very easy. It's, um, it's just an Android phone. So you're just making an Android program, uh, an Android app, uh, which means that app developers uh, can get into this Internet of Things uh, area very easily. Nice. And yeah, I it's 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 been a, a very easy to work with, to be honest. And even I mean, just. just been plug and using play. using Android Studio to kind of plug into that. Now you've been you've been playing around with this hardware a little bit. We've kind of been chatting back and forth for the past couple of weeks about the idea of this this kind of segment of this kind of you know dive into what the Android's th Android Things Dev Board is. But you created something with this board. I'm very curious to see oh. what you created. I want to see a demo of this. This is this is terrible, and this is um, <laughs> one of the problems with development. I did. Um, I um, uh, put in uh, the uh, uh, the time to run the tests and do the demo programs and that kind of thing. And I had actually developed something really, really nice. Uh, and you can see the beginning of it uh, right here. Um, the only problem is uh, once I touch the button, which says, says start demo, um, it explodes. <laughs> no, they, I'll, I'll show you what happens, and I will tell you what. See, it reboots. Oh no! Because what? Yeah, it's such a shame. It's such a shame because I had okay. been spending quite a while um, testing this out, and um, what I had done it was I had run TensorFlow on it. Um, mm. Now the. Um, the camera can is, of course, a camera. The Android board is an Android board, so it does image recognition. So the idea was I had, and I actually had quite a bit of success by showing it these um, uh, these pictures, and it would tell me uh, what it was. Oh, let me just get it. Uh, it's a dog. And, it's a yeah, dog. And it actually recognized all these different breeds of dog. Oh, okay. Um which was Golden rather Retriever. <laughs> yeah. Husky. Uh, Siberian Husky. Because Flow was there, I had programmed this whole system to uh, respond uh, really nicely to these things. Um, but then I started 
retraining the TensorFlow systems. TensorFlow is, um, is of course, Google's uh, machine learning language. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that um, when I show you this final picture, uh, it would uh, show you, instead of the breed of dog, it would uh, have a nice little stop sign. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Especially for Flo. Seeing as we know... <laughs> Because we all know you love the Kardashians flow. So, I mean, however, (laughs) uh, when I was training this TensorFlow system, because you've got to chuck a whole bunch of uh, things in there, a whole bunch of pictures, but I wanted it to work with the Kardashians as well and not just (laughs) hack this in there. Um, But my TensorFlow, my current model isn't. there's something corrupted uh, on the final iteration of the model. So this very, very cool and funny segment I wanted to do has failed. I'm no, terribly sorry. But you know set. what? It's it's, wow. it's valuable information I'm because I'm really curious um, if, if we can just take a couple of minutes to talk about TensorFlow a little bit because this is... I mean, this is a big deal for Google right now is this artificial yeah. intelligence and TensorFlow and, uh, you know, they, they're, they're miniaturizing they're ten- TensorFlow for oh. devices to basically open source artificial intelligence for developers just like you. Like, had you worked with AI before uh, working with TensorFlow? And, like, what is that experience I, yeah. like? I had read a lot about it. Um, but to be really honest, this uh, past, uh, and it was Google's first European conference um, in Krakow, they uh, definitely had a lot of their top guys there um, on uh, machine learning, AI, TensorFlow, um, the the Google, uh, uh, the intelligence needed for uh, Google Home to work. So they had some really interesting demos there. Uh, and a lot of workshops. So I went there um, and did that. And uh, when I got this board, this board is, you know, it's kind of simple, but it is basically uh, a good stand-in for everybody's phone nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it runs these TensorFlow systems locally. Um, You can even do machine learning on the actual board. Um, So... All of this is is really now coming, uh, yeah. Where you used to grab the data on the phone or the computer and send it to um, to Google uh, or a server rack somewhere, it's all now coming onto these tiny little uh, boards, and you can run the system, the the TensorFlow information system, the database, which kind of uh, looks at the pictures and uh, decides, oh, it's a dog or it's Kim. Um, is 50 <laughs> megabytes. And I find that stunning um, because it can... Uh, I've tested it on, on a hell of a lot of dogs um, and it recognized uh, a lot of them. Um, and yeah, it, it's So just it's very, exactly it, like the now playing, the always on now playing capabilities because all those songs, all those IDs are stored locally on the Pixel 2, and we did that news story a couple weeks back. The file size is like 100 megs. Yeah, it's small, comparatively. It's it's insane, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Yeah. I was, uh, they've got uh, OCR systems um, down to a couple of uh, hundred kilobytes, uh, one of the guys uh, there told me. Um, so you can you can ram a, a lot of this stuff on on one of these tiny little boards. Um, well, yeah, as I can say, you can you can run uh, all the the character recognition and facial recognition um, on these things. Um, and yeah, it's to be really honest, it's uh, something where you can do so much with it. That the question is uh, really, well, okay, what are we going to think up? Um, and how are we going to combine it? Because, yeah, the, the computer from Star Trek uh, is almost there in, uh, in, yeah. in Google Home. Um, now add, you know, cameras uh, and outputs and motors and that kind of thing to it. Uh, and you've got a really, really impressive system. Um, and... To work with it, it's actually surprisingly easy uh, because this whole thing took me about two days to set up and um, about a day running through TensorFlow exercises. 
Um, well, not a hundred percent successfully, of course, you because did otherwise all that I... set up. You did all that set up, and you almost got there. Uh, <laughs> it was it was very close. Yeah, well, I I believe um, if I'd had uh, an hour more um, and I uh, hadn't updated uh, Android Studio, uh, I'd have gotten there. <laughs> oh, updating isn't that always the the end game? Never right? update. Never update ever. When it's, it's working, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Martin, we really appreciate you taking all of that time to set this up and to kind of give a, an explainer on uh, on Android things because we yeah. haven't really talked about it very much on the show. But uh, people can get their hands on the kit. If you go to developer.android.com slash things, I think that takes you there and that there's a, a place to get to the developer kits from there. Right. You can get one of these. Multiple and, types. And, yeah. Yeah. And get to um, get to creating your own Kim Kardashian. Is it Kim Kardashian or is it um, a breed it was, of dog uh, app? It was, yeah, Jesus. kind of Kim or not Kim, hot dog or not hot. <laughs> yeah, dog. that's that's probably what it is. That that makes sense. That but makes sense. Uh, I have to say, it was really fun working with the the system. It's really easy to learn, um, and um, yeah, that's I I love diving into these kinds of things yeah. uh, and seeing actually how, how much is uh, yeah doable with it. Right on. Nice. Maybe next time I'll, I'll show you the actual working prototype. You'll, you'll have to invite me on for five uh, minutes so that I can absolutely. I, show gar I guarantee there's something cooler you can do than something that involves the Kardashians. I believe Ouch. in you, Martin. I believe, I believe <laughs> you can do it, man. I know, I, I know you're better than that, just like Flo is better than watching them. Oh, so. <laughs> All right, I completely uh, agree with that, Ron. <laughs> yep. All right, let's uh, let's answer an email actually from an old friend of the show. We, we've we've seen Corey Scott at Captain Temerity on Twitter. He's a fan that's uh, stopped in here many times to watch in person. So it's great to hear from you, Corey. And if I remember correctly, back in the day, he would bring us cupcakes. That's right. He brought us yes, really I missed, good I missed cupcakes. those cupcakes, Corey. You know, yeah. I missed them, man. All right, oh, so. <laughs> they, they were really delicious. I think they were from Sift. If I'm not I think mistaken. so, yeah. They were great. Uh. So, Corey, it's a little bit long of an email, so I'm going to cruise through it, but this is something I had not heard of. So he says, so yesterday, Sunday, I started getting weird texts from friends in response to a text I was sending them, but I hadn't and could see no record of anything being sent on his phone. He says, it was a request to take a screenshot of a Google verification code. It apparently has to do with a well-known Google voice scam, and he provides a link to, uh, a link to a product for him <laughs> on Google's site. I'll explain it in a second, but he says, Now, I use Textra as my messaging app based on Ron's recommendation. I got it through the official Google Play Store as I do all my apps. The only thing I can't think of that's maybe putting this completely in my lap is that I recently did the beta update on my Pixel XL to Oreo 8.1 through the beta program. Uh, he says, as soon as I started getting these text backs, which again, I'll explain in a second, I removed the Textra app from my phone. It seemed to stop immediately. No one else has responded to me about them, and I've talked to my friends who'd been a Affected, telling them to change their passwords for Gmail and walking through a work uh, friend of getting his own mobile number locked down through Google Voice, which he hadn't used before. That was a weird way to introduce him to it. Anyways, <laughs> I really don't want to lay blame on Texture for this, as while I'm normally very careful with what I access with my phone, there's so many dangers out there these days. It could be just as easily uh, something I did, but I want to let you guys and other AAA audience members know about this and to be on the lookout and see if anyone had any similar issues. I can see it's a known scam. It's just that it seemed to come in a way I hadn't known was a possibility. Either way, thanks. So what is the scam? So basically, it uses Google Voice. Google Voice uh, if you didn't know, has has long been used for scammers uh, for creating random phone numbers that they can then use to call and scam people and a variety of different, you know, a menu of different scams. Um, but it requires, they've made changes to Google Voice that require a virgin, let's say, phone number that hasn't been put through the system before hmm. in order to set up these accounts. That's to stem spammers from opening up just hundreds and hundreds of numbers and using them to call to do their scams on. They need to provide an actual number that exists to verify. They then send a link to, or you know, send a code to that actual phone number to verify it. And they say, okay, you can have this new number. 
So this, so the scam allows them to use essentially your number. They call you up or write you up or whatever and say, hey, um, there's this thing going on uh, and, and I want to talk to you about it, but I have to send you a code uh, and, and you're going to get this verification code and it's going to allow us to lock things down. It's one of those kinds of things. It's social engineering sort of thing. When you on your phone number get this verification code from Google Voice, and you enter and you tell them what that number is that got sent to you, then that allows them to basically register your phone number as an official Google Voice number that they can then create numbers off of. I hope that makes sense. But basically, it's like commandeering your phone number so that they can create a bunch of illegitimate numbers and use your phone number in that regard to do all sorts of weird things. Um, there is a way, there are instructions in the Google Voice Help Forum for reclaiming that number. It's not that difficult to do, but we'll have the link in the show notes if you want to check it out. There's probably a better explanation here as well. Of I, I don't know if I did a, a great job explaining this. Um, Ron, did you have thoughts on this? What did you think? No, I just I just thought that a it's insidious, right? It's like it just it it shows the lengths that these folks go to it, and I just I thought I mean it was a bummer that this happened to Corey, but I was glad that um, he brought it to our attention so we could have more people be aware of it, and especially Google Voice users to not get you know caught by it, you know. Right. So that that yeah, I think that's more just kind of a awareness kind of thing, and and uh you know i thank Corey for you know really deep giving the detailed breakdown of what happened through it yeah wade county in chat says my brother used to get these texts and this is this is important what he points out yeah. here he says it's because he put his number on craigslist for a listing and that's kind uh, of the the that, oh. that's what this hinges on you've got your phone number somewhere publicly out there right so then they capture that public number and then they get in touch with you and say in order for us to talk or in order you know whatever their their reasoning is that we convinces to you to then tell them what that verification number is once it comes through. I don't know, you know, some people obviously fall for it. And when they do, their number kind of gets commandeered through the Google voice system. You as the owner, apparently uh, of the phone can undo that. You just have to follow the instructions in the product forums, uh, dot google.com link that's in the show notes. You can find that at twit.tv slash AAA. And that's that. Uh, thank you for sending that in, Corey. Really appreciate it. Before we get into the arena, we need to take, uh, take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Blue Apron. I haven't eaten for a while, so I'm about to get really hungry with this ad read. Their mission is to make incredible home cooking accessible to everyone while supporting a more sustainable food system, uh, setting the highest standards for ingredients and building a community of home chefs. And you become part of that community when you uh, are with Blue Apron. It's awesome. Blue Apron has established uh, partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. Their seafood is sourced sustainably. Beef, chicken, and pork come from responsibly raised animals. And produce is sourced from farms that practice regenerative farming. For less than $10 per person per meal, Blue Apron delivers seasonal recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals in 40 minutes or less. And they have some recipes that take less than that, like 30 minutes. Some of them that take a little bit longer, which I'll talk about one of those in a second. That was amazing. Uh, they ship the exact amount of each ingredient needed for a recipe which means less food waste. There's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. And they have a freshness guarantee. Every ingredient in their delivery uh, arrives ready to cook or they'll make it right. You can choose from a variety of new recipes each week on your own, or you can even let Blue Apron's culinary team surprise you with their own picks so you'll get things that maybe you wouldn't have picked. Uh, maybe crispy wild Alaskan pollock and garlic mashed potatoes with roasted broccoli and tartar sauce, uh, cheesy broccoli baked pasta with crispy thyme breadcrumbs, seared steaks and garlic butter with oven fries and romaine salad. That's my kind of meal right there. And then I, I should say a couple of nights ago, well, this was last week, we got one of the meals through Blue Apron. It was the seared chicken with roasted fall vegetables and caper butter sauce. I have the link actually. Uh, oh my God, that one this. was so good. And it was so freaking <laughs> awesome. We set that, that recipe so aside. The, the beauty of this, oh, of course, man. is that you end up, you, you find these great recipes and you set it aside and you can make it again, obviously. And, uh, oh man, at the, like we ate the entire thing. We were like, wow, that was really good. Cooking Sounds together, great. Yeah. It's, and I'm super hungry right now. So I want to make it again. Uh, cooking together, build strong family bonds and research shows that blue apron families cook nearly three times more 
often. And it's fun. You can have fun together. Take the recipes you love and add your own family twist to them. Get creative. That's what it's all about. Visit www.blueapron.com slash allaboutandroid. You're going to get $30 off your first delivery with free shipping. And uh, you'll see. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. Visit www.blueapron.com slash allaboutandroid. Blue Apron is a better way to cook. And we thank Blue Apron for their support of All About Android. And with Can that, I just say what's that? That I'm really hungry now. It's three thirty in the morning, and I'm hungry. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's three thirty in the morning. Thank you, Mark. Wow. Thank you. I I don't know if I said so that before, but thank just, you. You you have that's not the point. The point is I'm hungry now. I know seen all that food come by. <laughs> uh, then let me let me say thank you, and I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> We're almost done. Then you can then you can cook yourself a meal. That's uh, me an Oreo. A good morning and all meal. Will be forgiven. Yeah, I'll send you a package of mint Oreos. <laughs> uh, it is time for the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. 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 Wow. Let's see here. Let's see. All about Android 341 is, uh, well, it's no longer ready for your vote because those votes have been cast. And it looks like the number one pick from last week was Dark Sky. 45% wow. of the votes for go Dark me. Sky. I know. Way to go, Flo. I think you're on a roll at this well point, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah let's sure. not take it too far. I don't know. You're looking pretty good in the standings. Notification app is a little... <laughs> Notification simple. history log, or as I wrote it in the poll, hotification history log. <laughs> Apologies on that. 33%. Third place, Viber messaging at 13%. Fourth place, 9% for Oreo colorizer. Apparently, no one wanted to colorize their Oreos. Rough one, Jason. Rough one. So with those results, thanks to Wade County in the chat room, through 44 weeks, Jason, unfortunately, you are still in the basement with 105 points in last place. Yeah. Uh, the, the guests are in third with 109 points. I'm in second with 118. Not too far away from Flo is sitting in first with 120 points. So the gap between first and Jason is getting wider. Yeah. But Flo, you and I are neck and neck. So. Neck and neck. <sighs> yeah, it's not looking too hot for me. Uh, so I am the returning loser. So I will go ahead and go first. The loser always goes first, and that's me. I don't plan on losing this week, dang it. If you have uh, or are interested in the new Pixel devices, although maybe this is what bit me last week is is making it Pixel 2 related. But anyways. I actually, to, to that point, I actually, I had an app that was Pixel only and I was like, you know, I'm not going to do that app. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you never know. You never know how people are going to vote. But uh, this time I, I went with my gut. I went with my heart because I actually really like what's going on. So, uh if you know about the Pixel 2 devices, one cool feature, I think it's one of the really neat features that they have, and we talked about it a little bit earlier on this show, is the now playing feature. What is that? That means that when your phone, when you have it activated, this feature activated, uh, and there's music playing in the room, it matches to a particular you know, a database of music that's stored on your device, and then on your lock screen or on the ambient display, it'll show down at the bottom who happens to be playing at any given moment. It, it's not immediate, but it appears there eventually. And I've had a couple of times where I've looked down and been like, oh, that's really cool. Like now I know who sings this song and I've heard it a million times. That's, that's really nice. Um, the problem is, when you're out, no, it's okay. You can show it. Uh, when you're out about living life and everything like that, you might not think that you wanted to make note of that song that just played, you know, at lunch. Uh, and then you think about it later, you're like, God, I really like that, but I still have no way of, of checking it out. That's where Now Playing History comes in. And for 99 cents, Now Playing History has a running list of all the music that your phone has heard. Uh, while you've wow. been out and about, and it's uh, it's ordered by time, so you could go. Wow. Well, I was eating lunch at that place at two fifty. It was a late lunch, and they played uh, "Under My Thumb" by the Rolling Stones. Okay, you probably wouldn't want to listen. Look at that. Uh, you can see that my girls went on a little Taylor Swift kick at some point. Uh, apparently, they listened to Justin Bieber. That's nice to know, I guess. Uh, 
And a lot of this happened while my phone, like I, I think this whole playlist right here was when my wife and I were in the garage cleaning up and we had our Google Home out there just playing a random playlist. The entire time my phone was in my pocket while I was going about and everything like that. The whole time the phone, you know, because now playing was activated, it was identifying songs and this app captured it. So I can come back later and I can go, oh, I really, this, this, uh, this unheard of, no one's ever heard of Pink Floyd. Um, neither have I, nope. but I want to, I want to check out their music. You tap it, takes you through to, to play, uh, Google play and it starts a playlist. You should have chosen the who Jason, the what? who, you know what? The who, where is it? Is there any, the sorry. who on here? I was making no. a bad joke. Sorry. How about really bad? How about Rammstein? <laughs> no, we won't do that. Uh, Snoop Dogg. See, <laughs> I, there's, there's a whole hodgepodge of music on here, but that's just because I've been many places where there's music playing in the background. Uh, Rod Stewart. Yes, we all love Rod Stewart. Don't lie. You know you do too. And uh, there I you love go. Rod Stewart, actually. Rod, he's got some good music. Uh, John Denver. Yes. Uh, so Where anyways, are you going? Anyways, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Some of this is so random. Um, you can see that Britney this Mariah Spears. Carey, "All I Want for Christmas Is You," keeps appearing. That's Already? because I yes. like this whole screen of that, music. Britney Spears and Sync. Yes, this, this, is, this really was disturbing. Yeah, no, this was uh, <laughs> yesterday morning because my kids already with, on the Christmas kick. Or, you guys, slow you, down the train. Or, no, this is my kids. <laughs> So they well, wake I know, up with, slow down uh, the train. Don't don't you share uh, an office, Jason? So it could be Padre, right? Uh, yeah, but I want you know. Normally, I would say yes. This is Padre's playlist, but this is really early in the morning. I don't think either he or I were here at that time. Uh, my kids wake up and they go into the kitchen and they say. Hey G, play "All I Want for Christmas Is You," and then it's and then it goes down this horrible rabbit hole of Christmas songs by artists that you've never heard the songs before. They're like original songs that they created a Christmas song because they hoped it would catch on, and then they make you know millions of dollars forever and ever and ever. Uh, you've never heard them; they're really bad. But I got to listen to them yesterday morning, and this is proof. Wow. Welcome to my world, ladies and gentlemen. At least I got a little of the national in there, and I'm pretty happy about that. So, anyways. This is now playing history. It's a way to capture all of that meaningless or meaningful music that flashes uh, before your ears and before your phone while you're out in the world. And yeah, you can find that music afterwards and relive the joys of Britney Spears' My Only Wish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's technically, it's a really impressive app. It's cool. I like it. It's it's nicely uh, nicely laid out. You can favorite things in here and everything. You add them to your. See, I'll add Alice in Chains to my favorites, and there it is. And I can hold on to it forever and ever. <laughs> there you go. Now playing history, just for Ron. Okay, Ron, you are up next. I'll show it off. I am, I am up next. And uh, like I said, I had an app uh, earlier. But it was pixel only, so I wanted something that was a little more embracing. And then I stumbled upon this app, and I was like, oh, that's the one. And you know I'm not one to play with photo stuff that much. You know, like I'm, I'm not a great photographer. But every now and then an app comes along that is it allows you to enhance your photos that is right up my alley, and I think up a lot of, uh, a lot of our, our listeners' alleys. Um, this app is called 8-Bit Photo Lab. And basically, it allows you to 8-bit eyes or other bit eyes your photos. So, Jason, if you can pull up a photo there. I see you're already doing that. That's excellent. Any old photo. And then once you select the photo that you want to do, there along the bottom, you can change the resolution of the photo. Um, and as you make it lower resolution, of course, that's when the pixels kind of become more apparent and more clear, right? But it goes a little further along that. Hit the t hit the um, hit the uh, I'm sorry. Hit the palette button there at the bottom. Um, actually, go back. I'm sorry. Go back to. I didn't mean where. You, go back, 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 back. Go back to just the regular photo. Just the regular photo. The original one that you had before you messed with it. I don't or, know or how to get new, back pick, there. Pick a new yeah, photo. Yeah. Go, go back off, how, go before off. you mess with it. Yeah. There no effect. There we go. Okay. <laughs> hit, okay. Now, so swipe along the bottom to the palette. Nope. Nope. Oh, okay, nope. Okay. Okay. Nope. There you go. Where's yeah. the palette? Now, Swipe along the bottom toolbar. Swipe right. I am. How did, well, how did you how did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> hit, hit back. Hit back. 
Okay. How about we start over? Yes. Let's start over. Pick a new photo. Here we go. Okay. Pick a photo. Okay. So we oh, go in. We pick the, the dog. Photo. There we go. Okay. Okay. So so now Whoopee. it's still doing that. What the heck? It's a, Yeah. It only comes on when I have these oh, no. different filters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So go to the first one then. Go to the first one. This is random. So it's a, like a randomizer. Uh, All right. So now click on the palette. Okay. Okay, so now what you can do is you can adjust the color scheme and it also adjusts the pixel depth based off of resolutions of various computers and game systems. Uh, so there's RGB, there's Macintosh 16 colors, Windows 32 spectrum. colors. Oh, yeah. EGA. EGA was a good EGA, one. EGA, yeah, nice. exactly, right? Um, so basically it allows you to do all these kind of cool effects and, and apply these cool palettes based off of like old color depths and old kind of, you know, lower res computer systems. Commodore right? pet. Yeah. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, and so once I you do that, presets. Oh, look at that. The CGA is the best. Uh, look at that. Look, I remember, CGA. remember Game purple Boy. and science, purple and cyan CGA. Yeah. Game boy. This is the, like this earns the app alone. Like it's just like it's fantastic. You make your photos look like an old uh, an old EGA game or a Commodore uh, yeah. 64. There it is. So <laughs> so when you pick on one, right, and then yeah. if you keep scrolling on the right, um, you can add. Um, there are a bunch of other little filters and things like that. You can add in interlacing. Um, and you could add in kind of glitches and things like that to make it look even more kind of you, you basically you just destroy the photo eventually with pixels. Um, <laughs> but this app is really, really deep and there's just so much that you could do with it. it it's called 8-Bit Photo Lab for a reason because it truly is like a laboratory where you just mess and mess and mess with photos. You can save them. You can publish them to social media. You can you can share them with your friends, whatever you might want to do. Um, this is the free version. Um, there is if you pay, if you unlock um, the pro version for just 249, you get it. Uh, it unlocks a whole bunch of more stuff. You can you can uh, make wallpapers. You can turn your images into animated or fixed wallpapers. You can add more pixel shapes, more aspect ratios. They add more glitch effects. Add more dithering modes. Uh, it's just it's crazy. Um, so this is right up our nerd kind of alley. Especially if you want to say, hey, I want, what would that photo look like if that was an old uh, 386 Sierra game? Well, you can do that, right? So, um, I love it. I yeah, love so 8 bit Photo Lab, very, very cool. Get it. Uh, it's free in the Google Play Store, 249 in app purchase to unlock the extra goodies. Uh, but yeah, look at that. That, that looks like a, gr a great, glitchy kind of old photo. I love is, it. This is like uh, trying to tune in the, cables, the, the uh, cable station on an old yep. TV. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so cool stuff. So 8-Bit Photo Lab, check it out. It's fun if you want to play with this, that, uh, you know, those, those retro style 8 bitty 16 16-bit photos. So. <gasps> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. That's 8-Bit Photo Lab. Martin, I have your app installed and I'm realizing right now the only component I don't have is the actual Chromecast side of things, but I can show off your app and I think we'll get the picture. Yeah. Because I totally you said will, it You up. will. Awesome. I'm, I'm impressed you could. Uh, well, not really. It, it, um, <laughs> you don't have to be impressed that I could. It's supposed to be easy enough. So, yeah. Um, did you manage to get some pictures onto yep. your phone as well? Yep. Okay. All good. Um, well, this is um, it's called Showcast. Uh, I made this a while ago um, because I'm um, when I give presentations, I move my hands quite a lot. Um, and uh, at one point I thought, well, I should be able to give presentations using just my phone and a Chromecast. I mean, we, we're living in the future, aren't we? Um, so uh, I tried it just with my phone and a Chromecast, and that didn't work. So I made this app, and basically it's a presentation app. Um, now, the first thing you can do is to pick uh, your slides. Um, yeah, and you have to find on your phone some slides and some notes, exactly. Now, this is... In this version of the app, the uh, only drawback um, that you actually have to have your slides uh, and notes as pictures on your phone. So if you've got a PowerPoint presentation, you've got to add that, um, uh, convert that to a JPEG or PNG, move it to your phone. Um, and uh, yeah, you can go pick your notes as well. Um, 
The reason it doesn't yet work with PowerPoint and that kind of thing is, uh, or Google Slides um, is actually going to be fixed because I talked to a guy from uh, or the, the guys from the G Suite at Google and they said, well, uh, you know, you can just, why don't you just download a picture of the, uh, the slide of uh, your Google slide slide? And I said, well, that function doesn't exist. Uh, and they went, Ah, it does, it does. And I went like, no, it doesn't. So you get three Googlers looking down and uh, looking at me and going like, oh, you're right. This function doesn't exist. Let's build it for you. So very soon you will be able to use this with Google Slides. Anyway, once you've got your uh, pictures uh, sorted, selected, your slides and your notes, you can uh, start the presentation. And if you had um, a, uh, a Chromecast, um, on the top right, there'd be a button where you'd connect to your Chromecast. And what that would do is your no your slides are in the top left, yeah, and your notes are in the bottom right. Um, and only your slides uh, would show up on the Chromecast screen. Um, now, what that means is um, you can now uh, slide along. So uh, if you'd uh, go to the next slide, See, um, you see that your notes and your slides are kind of in sync. Can you enlarge the um, the slides? Uh, bottom left? No, uh, the slides. Can you go to the... Yeah, exactly. Now do the same thing. Zoom in on the... No, on the slide. Yeah. Now that will show up exactly like it shows on your phone on your presentation device. So this could be a Beamer, this could be a large TV, uh, whatever. So you can uh, zoom about, zoom in, uh, pan about. And then when you're ready to go to the next slide, you just go to the next slide, give it a flip. And you can do that on the slide or on the note. And as you can see on your bottom right, those are your notes. And you can you know, read what you were going to say about the slide. And only the slide shows up on the tele uh, television. Only this Beamer. top image would show up on Chromecast ever. This is just for my reference so I can describe what I'm seeing up there or what everybody's seeing up there. Exactly. Nice. Um, and I use it myself uh, for smaller presentations. The one thing it's not good at is when you're in a huge conference hall uh, because of all the Wi-Fi interference. Uh, but if you're um, just in a normal office setting, uh, you can, yeah, have your slides, your notes uh, on your phone. And, um, yeah, all you really need is a phone and a Chromecast, and you don't have to lug about uh, a bag filled with a tablet or a laptop or whatever. That's so awesome. that's it. That's awesome. It uh, takes a little bit of time to prep. Like, I, I did this super quick, so obviously it's just like a screenshot of my notepad or a text edit or whatever. But, yeah, you have to kind of prep your notes and turn that into an image. So that it syncs up and everything, but yeah, that is that is the one thing. Um, I mean, I'm as I said, I'm working on uh, integrating Google Slides, and it will get there. Yeah. But now you just if you've got any presentation, you just convert it to a picture, uh, a series of picture, put it on your phone, uh, select it, and you're good to go. Awesome. So um, I hope uh, yeah, people uh, like it and use it. Uh, and there is, um, yeah, there's a free version and there's a paid version. Um, they both do exactly the same at the moment. Only the free version does have a little um, uh, extra message on the bottom, a little watermark on the bottom of the Chromecast uh, screen when you're using it to present. Oh, okay. Nice. So just a fair warning for those of you who want to use it right away. Uh, you might want to get the paid version uh, if you're going to do an actual presentation for business people and that kind of thing. Which, I mean, I, I hate to break it to you guys because this is this is going to break the bank. It's $1.87 when I pulled up the paid version. Oh, and man. And if you're presenting to business people, you might not have that kind of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Expense accounts aren't what they used to be. <laughs> Just get the paid version. Uh, it's called Showcast. Uh, very good. That's awesome. I love. The, I love the idea of you know developers, people who can develop, creating a tool that fills their own need. Because I guarantee you, if you need a tool that does that, there are plenty of other people that do too. And uh, 
I don't know. I'm sure some of the best to tools were created in that regard, you know? Yeah, well, I hope people like it. Um, if you've got ideas, uh, feel free to send uh, to the developer email and uh, I'll see what I can do to it. Right on. Excellent. Showcast. Look for that. All right, Flo, I have your app installed. Um, go ahead and show it off or talk about it. Well, it's not as impressive as last week's app. Uh, but, <laughs> Don't start you know, it like that. Wow. Now that I'm, you know, I'm just being honest with everyone. I'm being a realist. But, you know, that now that I'm living the dongle life, I have a lot of Bluetooth devices that I have to manage. Um, one in particular that I found to be very helpful is this little free app called Bat On, which lets you know how much battery each of your individual Bluetooth devices have left on them so that you know if you need to charge things or not. I'm trying to um, see if I can now, connect something. I'm assuming Bluetooth. it's going to be hard for Jason to show because he doesn't have any battery, any Bluetooth powered things nearby. So maybe we could quickly switch over to yeah, here. Better. Let me turn down the brightness on my screen. I could just show you on my little webcam um, what it looks like very quickly. Can you guys see that? Yeah, it's a little blurry, but we see it. Eh, come on, Logitech. There you go. So you could see the battery of my Bose SoundSport right on the bottom. I just tapped it and it went away. Um, and when you tap it, it puts a notification in your notification tray to tell you uh, what the Bluetooth is like, how much battery you have left. That is all it does. <laughs> Well, and it well, but it tracks all of your Bluetooth connected devices. It does. It too, tracks so. every single Bluetooth that you have. And the nice thing about it is, if you're just connecting, if you're like me and you have to review Bluetooth connected devices, which I've been doing a lot of, uh, covering smart home tech, this will help you kind of keep track of all the devices you've paired to your device. Um, you can kind of like more easily weed them out. It's just kind of, it's just a Bluetooth tracker and it tells you how much battery you have, uh, when the Bluetooth device is on and active. Nice. So, and it, it shows up in your notification tray. It, uh, is super, it's just a super, super simple app. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And again, simple, but useful. Exactly. It'll fill Bat somebody's on. need. Baton, I, one I'm word. I'm really attracted to the icon because it's a piece of <laughs> toast. Yeah, of course it's a piece of toast. Yeah. It should be a piece of toast. Doesn't that make sense? Uh, don't know if that makes sense, but that's okay. <laughs> I like the icon. Uh, all right, so that is bat on. It's time for you to place your vote. If you want to vote for this week's arena, you can uh, check it out by going to twit.to slash triple A poll 342 twit.to slash AAA poll 342. Place your vote. Is, is your favorite app now playing history? 8-Bit Photo Lab, Showcast, or Baton? Place your vote, and we'll see what Victor chooses. Here. Come on, Victor. I know you like it. 8-Bit oh, yeah. Yeah. Photo there gets Victor's go. vote. <laughs> there we go. We'll check in on that next week and see where it lands. See how much further I, I delve into the basement on this year's arena. It's okay. Sheesh. It's okay. I, I want to thank the four voters um, already <laughs> who voted for Shoka. Thank you very much. I want to thank the four voters are... who believed in me tonight. Right. <laughs> it's, only it's only going up from there. It's only going up from there. Martin Edgar, really appreciate you, A, coming on to the show again because it was great to have you back. B, spending all that time putting together an Android Things thing, even though in the end it didn't quite work, but that's okay. We really appreciate that you did that. And C, staying up as late as you did or getting up as early as you did. I'm not really quite sure which. <laughs> I think it's the latter. Okay. Um, no, I want to say uh, thank you for having me on. It's been a blast, uh, just like last time. I really uh, I enjoyed it. Um, and, yeah, it's always fun uh, working on new tech. So that was uh, – it was not uh, a punishment at all. So Awesome. Well, we really appreciate it and appreciate your time. Uh, again, it's spiralcode.wordpress.com if you want to find Martin on the internet – uh, you can go I, I there. I will write a little new uh, hello 
thing down there because this <laughs> this is from what 2013 or something. I think that's the last, oh, the last update. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Put put something um, there with 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 some contact info in case somebody wants to reach out to you with oh I don't know an opportunity. <laughs> Will do absolutely. That's a very good idea, James. <laughs> just saying, just throwing that out there. Really appreciate it, Martin. Thank you again. My and, pleasure. And I hope you get some sleep either now or uh, later on tonight. What the next tonight, uh, Ron? What, what's up in your world? Um, just as we are doing the show, I'm hitting frantically hitting refresh. My friend is running for city council in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and he's currently ahead by four points in the polls with 92 oh, percent reporting in. Oh, no so, way. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. So hopefully Justin Brannon is the new uh, city councilman for Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Cross your fingers. Uh, looks like it's almost there, but they haven't called it yet. So nice. election election day magic. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm not running for city council. I'm yes. just running in. I'm just running in circles. Um, you can follow me at RonXO. You can follow uh, that's over on Twitter and on Instagram. That's where I'm both uh, most active, um, and all my fun stuff is there. Podcast and the like, and fun things like that. Um, although Victor, I believe earlier in the show we were talking about my wedding. I was able to pull up, found a photo of me and my lovely bride. If you want to share it with everyone, and if you zoom in, uh, if you zoom in on it, this is taken after the ceremony. Uh, but if you zoom in on my, you can see how how long my collar oh, is. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So uh, good stuff. So there we are. That was, that was right me on, on my wedding day in New York City. So there you go. So. <laughs> Great photo, man! Congratulations again. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, thank yeah. you, Ron. Uh, what about you, Flo? What's what's new in your world? I am working on some really exciting stuff right now that's going up on Android Authority, which you will find out about very soon. Uh, so keep keep privy to me on Twitter because that's where I'll tell you about it. And my Twitter handle is Oh That Flow. Oh That Flow. Thank you, Flow. Always fun. And we'll uh, we'll talk about the Pixel 2 XL and all that stuff yes. next week. Yes, I'm putting together all my thoughts this week about it. Right. So, and uh, I want to take it out and test it against a couple of other phones uh, the rest of the week. Kind of see what it's like in the camera department. Nice. <laughs> uh, it's good. I know that much. Which, which phones are you going to test it against? Uh, I've got a smattering of them over here. I've got a Note 8. I've got a V30. Um, that's good right there. On, you know. Oh, those, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's if, if those are any the two, requests? then you're good already. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any requests, find Oh That Flow on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I can't guarantee I'll take them because right. it's a lot of work. But. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Thank you, Flo. Appreciate it. We'll check back on that next week. And Victor, thank you for all your hard work today. Really appreciate your help on the show. As always, uh, you can find me at jasonhowell.net, yellowgoldmusic.com. Don't forget, we are doing very soon now the uh, best of episodes for this show and all shows on the network. So go to twit.tv slash best of if there is a moment from any show that stands out to you. Or as we do these shows, you know, something something jumps out at you. It's good to like note it at any time because this URL is always active, uh, not just at the holidays. Put in what you know. Tell us what you know, and we'll include it at the end of the year on our best of episode while we're, while uh, we're all taking our holiday break at the end of December. Uh, but that's it for this week. Leave us a voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Send us an email, AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter at Android Show. We are on Reddit. We have an awesome subreddit, twitaaa.reddit.com. Kyle D. does a great job there. Also, we've got folks working hard to keep every app from every episode updated at twit.to slash Android apps. So go there and check it out. All of our apps from the episodes that we've done are listed there. Show notes and past episodes at twit.tv slash AAA. Our episodes are all over anywhere you find podcasts. You're going to find us there, uh, and you can catch us live every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you all next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody. <laughs>